two camera breaks on the same morning. Welcome to another video. I'm up on my favourite bit of uh, landscape, Dartmoor, which is uh, not too far from where I live. I've come out this morning with two formats. So I'm shooting 6x17 and my 6x6 Mamiya as well. So I've got the Chroma 617, the Mamiya C330. got a couple of lenses for that, my 55mm and the 80mm and my 90mm on the 617. I'm at a place called Coombstone Tor, which is up on Dartmoor. It's on the sort of southern edge. I've been here quite a few times over the years. Now I know I've got quite a few compositions that I can shoot in square format that work pretty well up here. But uh, I need to sort of have a scout around first just to find a couple of uh, panoramic compositions. I've got a few in mind, but I'll obviously go through those with you as I find them. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a black and white morning. I'm shooting some HP5 this morning, which is a 400 speed film. It's nice and contrasty. Should be pretty good up here. Now it's dawn. The light is, is picking up now. The sun hasn't come up yet, but uh, it's looking pretty nice this morning. There's a few clouds over in the east. Which is, which is nice, over my shoulder. It's not looking too good at the moment. As you can see, it's quite kind of featureless cloud, but it is, um, it is shifting over. So I think uh, we should be okay. In the valley, just down behind me here as well, got some mist building up. So I'm kind of hoping that builds up a bit more during the morning. So yeah, uh, packed camera bag this morning. It's a bit weighty this morning with the two formats. But, um, so I'm gonna have a little scout around, see if I can find some compositions. But yeah, as you can see, I've got my hat on this morning. It's um, starting to get a little bit cold now, but that's, uh, that's good, it's nice. So I found my first composition, these two trees, gnarly old trees here. So I'm gonna shoot across, I've got this nice, these rocks in the, foreground here on the left and then sweeping around with these two trees to kind of balance the composition up. I'm going to shoot this first shot in panoramic so uh, yeah should look quite nice. So, some nice mist building up now so what I'm going to do is load both cameras up with some HP5 so I'm ready to go. Low down. These trees that are, are sticking up above the hill in the background there, which looks quite nice. There's some um, some light coming through now, and there's also some definition in the clouds there. It's quite a heavy cloud over this way, over to the west, but it is breaking up a bit, so we should be good. Just have all this up now, and then I'm going to uh, film loaded. Get the old ground glass out. I haven't used this camera since I was in France, so there we go. Put my trusty loop. Looks 
promising so far. Yeah, I'm using a grad on here as well. More to sort of boost up that sky because it's not, it's not looking that interesting. There's a few sort of lines through different levels of clouds. So I've got a 0.6 soft grad brought right down through to the base of the trees almost. And it should, um, should give me a little bit more detail in those clouds, especially those lines that are going through. So yeah, we're all um, we're all set. I'm just going to give it another couple of minutes just to get a bit more direct light, and then I shall start doing some uh, meter readings. Then, so I just check my levels. That's okay. So I reckon. Let me shoot it around F32. So I'm going to cock the shutter now, just so I don't forget. Okay, more release. I always like to make sure this thing's working before I put it in. Do a quick test as well. Take the film back out the way just in case. Yes, we're all good. We're all good. So this is the first time I've been out with both formats. So six by seventeen and six by six completely different formats but I've had some comments on a couple of the videos that I shot with the with the Mamiya recently people have asked um, you know do I find it hard to compose in the square format as opposed to the the uh, panoramic format I, I find it quite it, it, it's, it's so different and I, I really like the square crop and I quite I find it quite easy to compose in square but also in this format as well but the only thing with 6x17 is you've got to really think more about the composition. You don't want too much sort of wasted space. This this is quite a minimalist shot here. It's got these two trees. It's giving it some space in the shot as well. But I think having the two trees kind of balances things up a bit rather than just having a single tree. Uh, so yeah, it should look quite nice. But yeah, I uh, really enjoy shooting both formats. It's uh, it's nice and shooting them combined this morning should be quite interesting. Quite a lot of gear to bring with me. But uh, yeah, it's all good fun. So I'm going to take a couple of readings. F32. So ISO 400 film. It's giving me about half a second. I've got no other filters to worry about. So I'm going to take a couple of base readings. It's actually looking quite nice in the sky as well. So that's giving me an eighth of a second in the sky. Let's just take one off the grass in the foreground as well. Half a second. Half a second's probably good. I've got a grad on the sky, so that's going to hold in the detail a bit in the sky. Half a second's a little bit more exposure. It should give me a bit more exposure in the foreground then. Okay, half a second, and we're good to go. Just gonna shield the lens just in case I get any light bouncing around behind the filter. Houston, we have a problem. Slight problem, which I'm hoping should be okay. I don't know if you can see on the Mamiya. You've got um, on this side, when you put the film in, basically there's two sprockets inside, one inside the body, and then you've got these two here, which you pull out to actually get the film in. This one is just pinged off and broken. So, 
I've got all the little bits here, thankfully. But basically that's where the uh, the film sits in the bottom of the camera. There's no there's no little toggle holding the film spool in at the bottom. Top one's fine, so I'm hoping I've wound it on. I'm on frame one. The time will tell. But I'm gonna have to get uh, by the looks of it, they do a these come out with little tiny grub screws, so hopefully I'll be able to take it apart and fix it later on, but not now. So I'm just fingers crossed these come out okay. Ah, the joys of film photography. Not what I needed to happen this morning. So I'll make sure I keep these little bits in my pocket later on. Okay, so on to my second panoramic shot. Pain about that uh, sprocket knob thing, but one of those things, I'm afraid. So I might come back to that composition in a minute with the uh, Mamiya. Let's get a square crop. But for now, I'm walking back over the other way. There's, there's a nice shot up here which I want to shoot in panoramic first before I break out the 6x6 six six. I'm finding my second panoramic composition the light is about to disappear behind a bank of cloud I think so I've got everything set up I'll show you a quick, quick view of the composition now before the light disappears so there's my composition Fairly simple, single tree this time, but some nice landscaping behind and this hill off to the other side of it as well. So nice and uh, nice tight crop again on the tree and slightly off centre. Um, used a grad again just to boost up the sky. So you can see it's sweeping across this way and I've got this foreground rock down here and the base of the tree as well. believe this this morning I've now broken the wind on knob on my film back for the panoramic camera so I've basically rewound the film it's come back on the film window saying exposed so it's near the end of the roll but I don't open this up now I'm gonna wait till I get back uh, put this in the changing bag and get the film out that way but yes, a little bit fed up this morning. I have got a spare film back, which is good, but um, I'm gonna have to see if I can uh, get this sent off and repaired or replaced. But yeah, not good. Now to top it all now, the, uh, the lights disappeared. So I'm frantically trying to get to my next composition, which I'm gonna be shooting in six by six. I'll spin you around now. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a trial this morning. Two camera breaks on the same morning. It's not. Uh, it's not filling me with um, with good vibes, unfortunately. But I'm not giving up, so I'm going to carry on. So I'll spin you around now. So I've shot my panoramic shots. So I'm gonna switch now to the uh, Mamiya and six by six. Even though the direct sunlight's gone, it is quite nice. It's, um, it's very sort of gritty landscape. So this should, uh, this should work okay. So I'll just spin you around and show you my composition. So same tree, 
but I've got this lovely split rock in the foreground here. Uh, I need to get low enough, as you can see, to give some separation to the the rock there, or the tour in the background. So I'm going to shoot a bit lower and see if I can get that in. So give a bit of separation from the background for this tree. But uh, down about this low, so it almost looks like the tree's growing out of the rock. So I'm getting an eighth of a second base reading, that's at ISO 400. I've added a red filter just to boost up the contrast a bit more. No graduate filter on this one. So an eighth of a second, I'm going to allow two stops for the red filter, so that brings me down to half a second base exposure. Uh, this camera is uh, a lot easier to use than the 6x17. Obviously you've got the, it's, it's the viewfinder is easier to use. Focusing is a little bit easier because it's a little bit brighter. And again, like I say, composition wise, it's, uh, I find it quite, quite intuitive to use 6x6 format. So yeah, it's, uh, it's about looking for things that, that kind of fill the frame. Uh, but also, you know, there's elements in this scene where you've got to be careful what's creeping in on the edge. And with this particular shot, like I say, given that separation between the tree and the rocks, uh, it means you've got to kind of look down on it, so you've got to shoot quite low. I think at some stage I probably will get a prism finder for this. I think I'll probably come across, I haven't yet, but come across some shots that might need me to, to actually hold it up higher. That's, that's worked. So I've got another couple of compositions that I want to shoot with this. I'm going to move on up, back up to the top now. So here's my next composition. Shot this rock many times over the years, but never in square format. But this lovely split rock in the foreground, the two trees in the middle distance. Now I need to have some separation from those, so I'm up quite high. And uh, yeah, this is one of those compositions that I was talking about just now, where I could do with a prism finder. Thin slitherous guy, but because I've got to get that separation with the trees, I've got my tripod at pretty much full height, which is very difficult to compose. So as you can see, I'm on tippy toes. And I'm just trying to get some separation between the between the tree at the background there, which is quite difficult. So I've had to reposition a bit to try and get the separation between the trees and the background. I'm shooting at f22 as well. So again, I'm getting a 15th of a second base reading. Uh, red filter, so that brings me down to half a second again. Well, so far, very concerned about this wind on at the moment. There's basically nothing's gripping that spool at the bottom, but it seems to be okay. Fingers crossed. I'll soon find out in a minute. Right, I think that's worked. One more composition to try now. The light's got quite flat now, but I'm not too fussed. 30th of a second base reading. So that gives me an eighth of a second to allow for the filter. Again, F22. 
I'll show you the composition in a minute. As you can see, a nice little stunted tree, just like the way that it uh, overhangs and frames the background there. Got these nice rocks in the foreground. Sky's not doing much, but I'm not too worried about that. It's 55 mil lens, quite a bit wider than my 80. But even at 55, it's not, not that wide. It's, uh, yeah, I'm still having to uh, come back a little bit more than I thought I would to try and get this frame. Okay. Expose this as well just to give it a go. Again, I've got the red filter on so it will boost the contrast. Okay, that's better. It's giving it a little bit more definition now with this light. I think that's the last frame. And this is the moment of truth to see whether this film has wound on okay. So, let's have a look. Yes. So, despite the problem earlier on, it's actually wound it on nice and tight. So that's a relief. So even though it's not ideal, the camera can still be used. Okay, so, despite my problems with camera malfunctions and breakages, I quite enjoyed the, uh, the shoot this morning. It's, uh, it's been nice to shoot with both these formats. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the pictures. Please let me know what you think. I'll, um, next week, I'm going to be testing out some new filters that Case have sent me. Uh, black and white filters, I've got red, orange and yellow. That's the red one that I've been using this morning. I'll go into a bit more detail next week. But uh, yeah, they're magnetic. So I'm gonna go through those next week. But for now, I'm gonna go home and be fixing cameras most of the day by the looks of it. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time.